Recording in progress. All right, thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> April 10th, 2024, 6.04 uh, p.m. calling to order the City of Wood Creek Board of Adjustment meeting. I ask everyone to uh, thrive for a moment of silence and stay standing for the pleasure. <laughs> Yeah. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state under God, one and indivisible. Thank you. <clears throat> Is there time to spell roll? Sure. Mayor Jabrasco? Here. Mayor Pretend Deborah Hines? Here. Councilmember Lenny Bailey? Here. Councilmember Chris Dummer? Here. Councilmember Bob Hamrick? Here. Councilmember Krista Richardson? Is he not here? Thank you. And would you have a quorum? Yes, sir. Um, are there any bill comments? No, sir. Okay. So, first order of business is we're going to go to the public hearing. It is 6 6 p.m. For the purpose of considering a variance application request for a property located at Lot 16, Parkview Village Number 10, modifying requirements for the City of Wood Creek Ordinances, Chapter 50.37 and Purpose Cover, Chapter 156.056 Carports and Garages, and Chapter 156.059 Parking. Any comments from the public? All right, we'll close the public hearing at 6.06. .06. And a second uh, order of business is discuss and take appropriate action to approve the variance application as mentioned above. Mayor Mayor, please. I move to grant a variance for property located at lot 16, Par Food Village, number 10, modifying requirements for the City of Wood Creek Ordinances 156.056, carports and garages, and 156.056. Dot zero five nine parking, specifically stating that one car garage is allowed and that only two off street parking spaces are required for this property. A second. Seconded by Mayor Berta Hines. Um, so the motion is to um, approve a variance application request for the property located at Lot 16, Parking Village Number 10. Modifying requirements for the city of Wood Creek ordinances 50 by 37 and previous cover. No, nope. <clears throat> I didn't put that as part of my motion. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Your motion <clears throat> only included <throat> carports and parking? Correct. All right. Sorry. No worries. Um, for the city of Wood Creek ordinances 156056, carports and garages and 156. Stop. 059 parking um, with, with one car garage and two limited to um, on that parking space. Councilman Gurmer. Thank you. Um, the lot is 4,215.38 square feet. Uh, the median lot size in Texas is 9,500 square feet. So I think we can easily agree that this lot is to be considered for development, would be considered a small lot. Given that it is a small lot, adjustments need to be made to accommodate the plot for development. I support granting a variance reducing the two car garage requirement to a one car garage. I support the reduction of the requirement of a three off street parking spaces to two. Where I'm unwilling to grant a variance is for anything larger than the 30% impervious cover. We all rely on an already stressed aquifer for our water, the impervious cover restriction in places. How we help allow water to find its way to restoring the aquifer. Um, I do. Is there going to be a presentation? Is there somebody I ask questions to? Yeah, they should. Okay. We need to give the applicant an opportunity to, right. to give their presentation during the public. Well, why don't we 
Okay. Um, do we have a introduce yourself? Okay, thanks. I'm not used to this. Um, do you have the file where it shows the proposed site plan? Mm -hmm. So here in Wood Creek, I built a long bed, then the, uh, the owner of big homes and a set of homes. Um, and so we built out here in Wood Creek for about 10 to 12 houses out here within the past three years. And throughout that, we have um, we have respectfully always abided by the impervious coverage and made sure that our architectural drawings would meet all requirements. And the city has also been very helpful to make sure that we ensure that. And so uh, in this particular lot, we have uh, some significant challenges because we want to meet all the requirements that the city of Wood Creek has. However, this became a challenge because it's hard to meet the driveway specs. It's uh, difficult to meet the, the garage uh, specifications per uh, per plan, I mean, per uh, law rules. And as far as the impervious coverage, the difference of impervious coverage of the 30% as to what's being proposed now is approximately 345 square feet. Um, I know that there is a uh, a couple of things that uh, are hindering, as mentioned. Um, we need to give water uh, proper flow uh, that it needs uh, away from the house, which uh, definitely respect that. Um, but at the same time, I think by increasing the impervious, impervious coverage by 345 uh, square feet, what you're also allowing is less water usage from aqua, because it's taking up more uh, impervious coverage and less on grass, less on plants, which normally, which I've noticed in Wood Creek, has been a challenge on water consumption, uh, water consumption and how that's monitored through aqua. And so by a small increase of 345, yes, we are increasing their previous coverage, but I think on the other hand, you're also taking into account that there's less water to flow away from the, from the house uh, because of that reason, uh, because there's less area to, uh, to hydrate, to, to, to take care of. So I kind of thought this was a, a plus uh, from from the water consumption side of it by increasing uh, the impervious coverage just slightly, which will then meet all the qualifications uh, for the city of Wood Creek. You've allowed it. Can I ask questions now? Uh, thank you. Um, on the impervious cover calculations, I'm guessing the front door, front steps are calculated because it's part of the, but are the patio steps? Being calculated as well. In the drawings of future drawings, you see a side out, a side view of the backyard. Uh -huh. It's a raised patio and that has large steps going off of it. The other question I have about the patio, page nine, please. Um, the other question I have about the patio is it shows that it's actually in the 15 feet mm -hmm. setting. The 15 feet setting. Okay, so just to clarify a little bit, that's not okay. I know we label it. I think it's labeled. I, well, the, it's really a crushed granite area. It's not any hardscape or um, any pictures. Could you move forward still to the actual house? Oh, it's fine. Um, yeah, it's pictures of the uh, of the house. Mm -hmm. Um, then there's a back view. Oh, one more. The, no, another one. Right. Where we see the back there. So you see it's a... Oh, yeah. Right there, if this was just a, a conceptual plan that we had um, suggested to uh, code enforcement. We don't have the elevation uh, on that particular lot. It's flat. So that would mean it wouldn't necessarily be a raised, uh, a raised area. We're, we're just going to put some fresh granite down there to make sure that the flow of water will be uh, able to go through the back, uh, back side of the house. So what do you calculate the crushed granite? So probably, uh permeability is, or what does the city consider crushed grain? Uh, it doesn't matter. It does matter. Crushed grain is permeable. On the driveway, the center, is it based on uh, number nine again, I guess? Um, when I look at it, is it ribbon curves on the side of the driveway, like where the two mm -hmm. parking spaces would be in front of the garage? And then I couldn't read the middle section. I'm guessing it's the 
gravel. Is there a way we can rotate this? Uh, uh, you want rotating the other way? Yeah. There we go. Okay. Oh. One back. Oh, wait, one back. Yeah. Run this go forward. Sorry. So we'll make it back. That way? Mm, no, it was the other way. I'm sorry. It's okay. There we go. <laughs> all right. I'll let, I'm just going to make y'all dizzy for a second. Tell you when to stop. Right there. Okay. So really, this is a, a detail right here in the center that we're, we're proposing that be uh, actual flat work, all uh, all concrete. All oh, oh. that that was the idea to make the two uh, a two space parking area for the residents. And then from that concrete to the street is also concrete. Yeah, to the to the area that's going to be winged out to the to okay. the asphalt piece. And that's all calculated. About. That's correct. Um, is the back patio covered? No. No. Yes, uh, what is the okay? Our our rule is thirty percent impervious cover. Correct. And how much are you going to have? What will the percentage be? It'll be thirty four percent. No, thirty eight percent. Thirty eight percent. Which is the equivalent of 345 square feet. Five square feet. Yes, sir. Just curious. Uh, did you build the house next door? I did. Yes. Right. So, oh. these are not your homes. You don't plan to live in them, correct? That's correct. Or sell them. That's correct. And, you know, one of the major reasons why we have these large parking, you've probably already been told, is uh, these parking requirements is because we don't allow street parking. And with you being on a cul-de-sac, that's even more relevant because that also needs to be a safety protection space for emergency vehicles to be able to turn around. Yep. So, you know, allowing the reduction in parking, I, I saw your photos with the other houses around it have similar parking. That style, you know, we don't necessarily support that anymore. Uh, but, you know, you have built here before. You do, you did know the restrictions on the lot right. when you bought it. Right. You know, so <clears throat> variances can be kind of tricky because there's actually even rules about, like, how we can approve them or why we approve them or when kind of deal. So mm -hmm. one of the components is looking at, are we really creating, like, an unnecessary hardship? Mm -hmm. And I think the argument on the parking is viable. I'm not sure the argument on the impervious coverage it is as viable just because, I mean, everybody's required to follow that. I mean, if, you know, 300 doesn't sound like much, right? And then when we start doing that over and over and over, it, it adds up, you know, and then you have an entire house you've added to the community uh, yeah. and additional square footage you're allowing people to do. I'm just curious if you've thought about plan alterations if, to, yeah. you yeah. know, meet that requirement. No, that's a good, that's a good question. Part of the reason why, if you notice on the plan, the garage sits further back into um, into the space. Uh, it kind of sits in the center of uh, of the house. And the reason why is I wanted to make sure that we didn't have an issue with folks uh, already having to park on the street. So if you're able to drive into if you're able to drive into the to the lot a little bit uh, easier, that would have been a offset the. Uh, the thought of okay, you don't necessarily have three parking garages, but if you park inside uh, left side into the into the garage, that almost creates a little bit of an extra space for the residents. Um, now, as far as the impervious coverage, uh, yeah, there there are things we can do, um, but then it's one of those things where you take away from one spot and then you're giving it to the other. And I could pull the garage closer to the street, which will reduce um, which will reduce the the square footage of concrete and that be less impervious coverage so that certainly could could be an option but then you get back to the well now folks would have to be parking on the street because you removed a, uh some space from them where they could actually get away from the street so um there are there is definitely some options there and then i can make the walkway uh, more like stepping stones and the sidewalk in, in that area will reduce the 345 square feet maybe 100 square feet um I'd have to rework my drawings, but this would be initial proposal to see if you will accept it. Um, trying to make everything work. Um, and that's right. That's right. Yeah. 
Did you sell the house next door? I did. Yes, sir. Yeah, a couple of couple of notes. One is um have you have you looked at what a lot of people have done around town and to cut out of the concrete with gravel fill, uh, reducing your impervious cover. Mm -hmm. um, you know, secondly, you know, I drove up there and it's just like those little houses on those little lots. I'm not surprised very many, if any of them, you know, actually pulled thirty percent. But right, um, it's a it's a funny little funny little part of the neighborhood. You know that um, that looks like you know there's a lot of houses that were built not a zero lot line, but you know pretty close to it without. <laughs> You know any any regard and impervious cover at the time they were built. Um, so as far as fitting into the neighborhood, I don't think it's a problem. It's probably why we haven't heard from any of the um, any of the neighbors. Um, you know nobody's up in arms about this, um, but I I would like to see the impervious. I mean, it's like you know thirty eight is is like you know we have to swallow really hard to consider that. Um, you know if 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 you would come. With you know, plan that you know you had slotted driveway, you had rainwater capture built in. You, had, you know, if there were some things that said, okay, we're doing everything possible, but we just can't put a livable size house on this little lot uh, without a little help from the city. So, so it's just like, to me, it's usually just a give and take on these things. Right, but and to your point, um, it's about the. If, I, I totally get it. Once you you start. Adding a little bit of a variance for an impervious coverage for this house and for that house, then it's it's a whole new house, and so I can't I can't speak to how many folks come in and ask for an for extra impervious coverage, but I will tell you this is my very first time that I've been challenged by impervious coverage, and when I thought 345 square feet to a builder, it seems very minimal, but I understand to the city and the residents that that can be significant, so I'd be more than willing to uh, explore any. Any ideas that wouldn't create, um, I guess, um, an issue with the person that's going to live there? Because now they're driving in, instead of on a concrete driveway, they're going to be driving on rock, um, which they have to. I mean, they have to. But uh, this was a way to give them a little small two-car concrete uh, driveway so that other folks have at least two cars of. Uh, Sidewalk. So that's the reason behind the way I, I drew that this way. And can I get a verification? So we do not have the slotted driveway. No. That Correct. We see. No. So, no. We so did that at, at 14 and uh, 16. Uh, no. I can't remember. Okay. So Ken Canyon. Uh, Canyon Creek. Canyon Creek. Yeah, the two houses there. We did those strips. You know, folks. You know, didn't like it. They're like, no, we would have rather had this. And I said, you know, city of Wood Creek, this is the requirements. And we did that on Augusta on mostly all those houses there. Um, so by making that a gravel one, there's the challenge where now it's the residents are are frustrated because now I have smaller space to park and now I'm driving onto rock and I was trying to uh, come to you all and see if maybe there's something we can do to negate that. Contrarily though, at first I wasn't really wild about those smaller driveways. But now that we're so conscious of the previous cover, I mean, they're kind of class act. You know, we're doing a little extra. So uh, your first argument about saving water consumption somehow, less less landscape area. And more hardscape, right? Hardscape. How would, um, how would these adjustments well, that. well, I'll use 22 Canyon Creek as an example. 22 Canyon Creek was the last one that wrote that we we built. Um, Aqua must have stopped by two or three times and uh, talked to us because we had to keep our grass hydrated. We had to keep it alive throughout uh, those difficult months. You know, I had to bring water from, I had to outsource it out and we'd have to be out there spraying it to keep it alive. By increasing 345 square feet, Aqua is, and I put gravel as landscape and more of a hardscape landscape plan. There is no, there's hardly any exterior water consumption. So that to me, that's in my opinion, offsets the, the impervious coverage increase of water flowing because there's less water needing to flow. 
from the actual line. Well, to be clear, we don't allow outside watering right now. Right. So <laughs> it doesn't matter what's outside. It's but not it, getting watered unless it's your bathtub. So. Right. But as far as from the rain and the flow of water, if that's the issue of impervious coverage is the flow of water, then if it rains, then it will have ample space to, to flow away. If that's the only no. determining factor, if not, then yes, you're right. So those are two different things. Yeah. That's like wastewater drainage. That's different. Impervious coverage is actually the feature of the land where the water infiltrates raw land and down into our aquifer. And so the more land we pay, the less water we have going into our aquifer, which is in this valley right now, just, you know, paramount concern. We're being asked as representatives what more we could possibly be doing. We have like a task force to try to maybe even make this stuff harder, you know, because, and, and it's not just Wood Creek, it's building in Wimberley as well. They follow the same environment. Um, so, I mean, you know, if, if we're talking about inclination to budge, parking, you didn't make a bad argument there. With the impervious coverage, I just feel like you could meet the expectation that's possible. And um, so I would support a rethink on that request of 38% because you're talking about almost 40, right? So, I mean, it's a pretty significant request, even though when you say 300 and something, it sounds smaller, right? Right. That's almost a full parking spot, actually. Right. 200 more feet, square feet, no, you have a parking spot. No, I, I, yeah, sorry, I didn't yeah. But yeah, no, I get it. Um, and I guess I'm not opposed to decreasing, uh, decreasing it, but then it's one of those things where you're, you take it from one place and you have to give it to another place. So if the, the majority of the, well, the reason is that we need our impervious coverage, uh, met at 30%, then yeah, that would just alter the amount of uh, parking space that we provide for the buyer, for the, for the future homeowner, uh, without making their driveway very uncomfortable and uh, unable to. It, I, I imagine it to look all, it's just all gravel then at that point. Um, to make, I, if I may, if I may sure. I, it may be one of your homes, I guess. Um, and the others came in as slots, slot and drive. Mm -hmm. Um, they met 30%, yeah. but they wanted to put a deck on yeah. or a span of deck. Yeah. And so they came to the city and said, you know, what can we do? And they, they cut out the concrete and just made it one big gravel space. Mm -hmm. And it looks fine and, you know, nothing worse. Yeah. So, I mean, they, I mean, like, there are ways. And I mean, people, yeah, people no, absolutely. Do it. Yeah. And that's, it comes down to a, uh, I'm sorry. Comes down to a buyer preference at that point. If uh, there's some buyers that just hate their gravel uh, driving for their parking lot, and there's some that make adjustments, then rather would have that. So it's just a. Uh, the house is not sold. It's not sold? No, no. Is, is the house sold? No, no, it's not. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, my question is so, how much square footage would you include the first floor and second floor of uh, the big space? I believe it's around 1,900 square feet. Well, that exceeds our minimum. Well, I mean, yeah. it meets requirements to be able to build. Yeah, the first floor needs to be a thousand, the second floor needs to be two hundred as a minimum. Yeah. Questions, comments? Well, these changes affect the price. Yeah, it would. Yeah. Because yeah. I'm very sympathetic with the high cost of housing, yeah. and maybe this is a smaller lot, but it might be affordable for a different builder, mm -hmm. I mean, for a different buyer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, it, because uh, it's a reduced lot, yes, it, it would affect it. They're already having to deal with a reduced lot. Now they're gonna have to do, deal with a, sometimes the driveway that's just not attractive, which makes it harder for me to sell. It'll probably sit a little bit longer. Um, and so yeah, to answer your question, it would, would make sense. One last thing, Mr. Mayor said, talked about the idea of the deck, et cetera. If, if anybody ever wanted to build one, would not be able to, they wouldn't be able to put a two foot by two foot anything anywhere. That's right. Likely. And that's something I talk to the buyer always in any home. That as we far tell as them, yeah, we tell them, see, Wood Creek has a 30%. If we build this house, we do this driveway this way, it leaves you with, uh, with no uh, 
uh, no square footage left, and they all understand that, and I make sure that that they do. Um, so if they come in here and say, "Oh, we didn't know that," then yeah, not accurate. Well, the motion on the floor is to um, approve the variance application request for the property at Lot 16, Part B, Village Number 10, modifying requirements for the City of Wood Creek Ordinance at 15606 Park Walking Garages and 156.059 Parking, which creates a one car garage and two on site parking areas. Make another comment. Um, just I'm really inclined to approve what you're doing, but I don't know that I forgot the majority here. Is there a way that you can come back to us with a, an amended plan? Well, two things would happen if we all voted yes right now, he gets approved of his parking changes. We would then need to relook at his plan and consider how to meet an appropriate coverage requirement from the city. Requesting another variance would be another five hundred dollars. Yeah, if he could, if he could find three hundred forty-five square feet, he doesn't have to come back to the board for adjustments. Yeah. But if he can only find three hundred feet, he has to come back. He would have to find variance just for the impervious coverage. Any anybody would. Yeah, to build on any lot here. Yeah. If I don't know that you want to do this, and I'm not suggesting that you do. But to the extent there is an impervious cover limitation that you're comfortable with, and it's something less than 38%, you could grant that, and then you could just have to meet it without having to come back. No, see, that's what I was like that, yeah. because he sounds so willing. Yeah. But maybe you can't find the 12th street to the box. So that is, because that's, that's something less than what's being requested, and so you could do that. Right. It would, it would, and you, 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 you could certainly it. make another motion. There's nothing that prohibits it. You could approve that and then have a discussion yeah. about the other one. Yeah. In response to that, if there is a certain uh, percentage that you would allow that would reduce 38 to maybe 34 or something, then I could go back to the architect and we could, we could find that, that the midpoint. Uh, so would it be in excess and still find a way to give the homeowner the parking spaces that as initially proposed and and maybe that's a reduction of walkway or there's there's different ways we can we can try to attempt to give them uh um, for. I like to walk you through this amend the motion to allow a 34 uh 34% mm -hmm. impervious cover limitation. But you can come back to us if you meet that. Anyway, stand that. To allow 34% of previous cuts. I think it I think it might be better to let's have a vote on the main motion and then have a have a discussion on the, the impervious cover separate so that we don't okay. have to do that. All right, so we'll take a vote on the main motion. But does that force him? It won't preclude you from that making that. a motion to to approve the impervious cover at 34%. That's your choice. Or we can show up hands. Yeah, All in favor of the variance to allow the you know, carports and garages and the parking. Raise your hands. Aye. 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 All opposed. All opposed. Motion passes. For that variance, so mm -hmm. if you'd like to go forward. Uh, I move that. We allow a impervious cover uh, variance of 34%. Second, no second? All right. All right, so um, I'd like to like the second. Um, any other discussion on it? Um, so, so that would reduce it from 345 to about 162 square uh, additional square feet. Yeah, that's 
Well, he said they got no second. Yeah, oh, I see. I didn't get a second on the motion. So oh, I see. Failed. Okay. It failed for lack of a second. So you're still at the 345 square feet. Okay. And you need to find it somewhere. Okay. Or or come back with a different variance and start the process over again. But you you're approved on the on the parking on the parking in the garage. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, any other business? Um, Call the um, public meeting end at six thirty four. Um, yes. Yeah.